Today we're going to open up this and two other packages for my Blick Art Haul. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Elisa of Elisa Laporte Art and today we are going to open up a couple of boxes from my Blick Art Haul. I got several new supplies that I've been desperately needing. So let's open this up and check out what I have inside. I have my box knife here. So we will start opening this up. Now I've been needing to buy some new supplies for a while, so I'm really excited. I was finally able to get some. Not everything is here because some things are on back order and I'm not expected to get them till October and I could not wait to open this till October because I need some of the supplies that are in this box for some upcoming paintings. Okay, so we have a big box here, lots to get through. First up, I have some Micron pens, which are waterproof. I've been doing a lot of pen and ink with my watercolors lately, so I go through these a lot and this probably isn't enough, but I didn't want to spend too much all at once. So this is a size 02. I have two of those and two in the 0 0.5. So they're very, very tiny. Shoe guys, a small, it's a nice size for detailed work. And then this one is my 0.5, which is extra fine. We'll check what's in here. I think I have some brushes in here. So that is one of the main things I have been needing, you guys, some new brushes. I love my brushes. I have some Kalinsky brushes and I love them, but I've had some of them for 10 to 12 years and it was about time I got some new and updated ones. And I've seen a bunch of people using this black velvet silver one and I really wanted to try that. So I've got a bunch of brushes I've never tried before and I'm excited to test them out and you know, compare against what I've previously used. Okay. So I did get a Princeton liner brush here those really tiny ones for really small details. I like the handle actually. It's very soft. Uh, I go through these really, really fast. This is probably the one brush I have bought multiple times. Uh, not necessarily this brand, but I buy liner and rigger brushes quite often. It doesn't matter how cheap or expensive they are you go through them very quickly because the bristles damage a lot faster because you're kind of doing all those little details. So I usually buy fairly cheap ones, about $2. I got the black velvet silver, size one, which is a nice, it's not too small. It's not quite as small as my liner brush here. The length is about the same, but it's not quite as thick. This one will be able to hold more water. And then I got the size eight black velvet silver. I've had a lot of people say how much they love them. So I thought, why not give it a go? I like how much of a point that comes into. Now brushes and paper are two of the things I really, really do not skimp out on. I will, I mean, I don't buy every brush super expensive, but I have found that I'm, I like a good variety of some cheap brushes made out of synthetic and I like some of natural hair as well. Here we have a size 12 silver black velvet. It's nice and big. You can compare it to the size eight here. It's a nice difference there. And then I got a Skoda. I've used these ones for years. So I got some more, but they're slightly different. The ones I have prior are red and they're a little bit different. These ones have a finer tip. They have a really, really fine tip. You see that? It's 
it's, it'll hold a lot of pigment and water for me, but it'll be able to get some really nice lines and detail work. And then you can also push it down to create some bigger edges as well. That is a size eight. And then this other one is a size four, same thing. This is of course just a kneaded eraser. I got several of these because I do go through them fairly quickly, but the other sizes I got were on back order. Here, I got some Daniel Smith watercolor ground because I wanna try painting on other surfaces and this is the way to go. So if you're looking to paint on like canvas or wood or I think it said pretty much any other surface. You put this on first, let it dry, and then you can paint over top of it. I am new to this, but I've heard a lot of people talk about it, so I am excited to try this out and we will review that. I have got myself also a journal that is square. I have almost finished my moleskin sketchbook. Let me know in the comments below if you would like to see my sketchbook once it is finished. I have like seven pages left. So let me know if you would like to see what's inside and I can go over what I do for my sketchbooks. This one is a five and a half by five and a half. I like the square look. Trying to see, it's a handbook journal company. Never tried them before, but it was the only one I could find that was square and I really wanted a square one. So yes, we did get our Lunar Blue, which I recently saw on Daniel Smith's site and it looked amazing. And so I will be reviewing this one and testing it out to see what it can do because it had some beautiful granulation in their pictures so I am really excited about this one and I have this is one of the colors that I told you I have some paintings planned and I'm going to be using this and this one moon glow which a lot of you guys have used I've heard a lot of people use it I hadn't got it yet but Moon Glow also has some beautiful granulation to it, but it's a little bit more purple. In some of my videos, um, you can check out here in this card, or I will leave a description below for my oranges and reds. I did a whole video on them, and I realized I had way too many reds that are on the cool side of the color wheel. So I needed to get some more that are a little bit more warm. And this one actually Alvaro Castagna uses on his palette. It's Mayan orange. I just looked at his palette and got a few that I saw there because he has those very bright reds. And we have some more here. I went crazy. Okay, and then I got Peril Red and Deep Scarlet. All of these beautiful paints are new and I'm so excited to see a review on them. Let me know if you would like to see a review on them as well in the comments below. And I can add the red ones to my blog post of the reds I already have. The other colors I got are Burnt Sienna Light also a color that Alvaro had on his palette. I wanted to try it out. I have regular Burnt Sienna. I wanted to see what this one does. And for browns, I have come to really, really love Daniel Smith and Lavender. I've seen these colors on Alvaro and Joseph Zabovic's palettes and I like what they can do with them. So we'll try them out on our palette. There have been colors I've been wanting for a couple of years now. 
just have not bought yet because I had so many other colors I had to buy or restock. We have yellow ochre, which is just me replacing one that I finished, but I had yellow ochre in the Sennelier and so I'm gonna try it and I can compare it with my Daniel Smith. And then I got Hansa yellow. If you wanna see more yellow reviews that I have, I will link them in the card and the description below where you can check those out. This, I got me a palette because, can we ever have too many palettes? Really? But I wanted a palette that had a little bit more mixing space. If you guys have seen my palettes that I use here at home, I love them. They're porcelain and I really like that. And for smaller mixes, these are great. But when I need to make large mixes, I need something a little bit bigger, but I still wanted it not heavy or compact or something I could travel with. I got this, which has an extra tray. This has 18 colors, which is more than enough for me. And it's supposed to be leak proof and airtight. So we'll try that and see how that works out. I like the blue. It's not very heavy. Now these I've been very curious about. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys know of Allie Cavanaugh, but she uses Aquaboard and I've heard of other people using Aquaboard and so I've been very, very curious about trying them out. So I bought a pack of four small ones to test this out. If I really like them, I might buy some more bigger ones. They weren't expensive. I think it was like four or five dollars for four panels, six by six in size. Something other than paper, and I love paper, but it's fun to try out new surfaces. So last thing in this box. This is an archival storage box. I have one, I love it. It keeps your papers from becoming damaged because it's a nice sturdy box. It is acid free, lengthen free, and it's archival safe. You can buy special papers to go in between your paintings, but I just set mine in these. It keeps them nice and safe. Some people have talked about how they store their paintings. This is how I store my paintings. I actually already have a box here that is more than full, which is why I ordered two or three more. This one is my paper. So I probably will open it just so you guys can see. But I know what kind of paper it's. The Arches 140 pound cold press paper. I bought, I think two more five packs. So that's 10 sheets. They were $35 for a five pack. And I always just buy mine in bulk by the pack and then I cut them down to the sizes I need. It's cheaper that way. And because I get them in the bulk pack, they also don't open them. So nobody has touched the paper since it's been in its package and I'm less likely to have fingerprints or bends or anything and I'll show you why I'm always so impressed with the way they package this paper. So inside this big box, which is taped up really well, so nobody's gonna get into it. You're gonna disappear for a minute. Then you see inside of that box, it's inside two pieces of cardboard and they have some of this wrap around it, which I just cut away so that they don't move, they stay in place. And then the paper is in between those and you can see here it's wrapped in the original packaging. They even taped it to the board so it doesn't move. Here we go. So the arches. I can't remember. So yes, this is the, you can see here. 
I just got one. I thought I got two. I guess I got one. Probably, I didn't remember. <laughs> it's 140 pound cold press. It's in natural white. You can choose uh, bright white, natural white, ivory, and there might be another color, but I like the natural white. And it's 22 by 30 inches. I can even do a video just showing you how I cut down my paper. If you would like to see that, let me know in the comments below and we will get that done. I think, I think this one is another storage box, just a bigger one. Let's see. It's the storage box. It's just a really big one. See, look at this. Are you not impressed by how they package these? So even my storage box stays nice and safe. Guys, I am so impressed with Dick Flick, with the way they have packaged my stuff. It has always come in safe. I've never had things really damaged. So hats off to them and their shipping department for making sure my stuff stays safe. I really appreciate that. And I know as other artists, you guys appreciate that as well. This one right here is 11 by 17 by two. So they're two inches thick. You can see it's quite a bit smaller. But this one is 18 by 24 by two. One of the things I like about these, they have these metal around the edges, which keep them pretty sturdy. And the material is quite thick. It's not too thin. They're not, they don't take up a lot of room. So I really, really like them. Ugh. See, this is the one I currently have and it is packed full. And as you can see, I've had this one for a good five years. Still looks great. Other than it's too full and I need to move some to this box. So here's everything that I pulled out of the box besides the paper and the archival boxes. And I still have more brushes, more kneaded erasers. I have some more journals that were on back order, some moleskin. So I still have more stuff coming in. I will show those when they get here, but it was supposed to be like two weeks or a week into October. And I really need these paints for something very specific. And I'm excited to get started on those. So I didn't want to wait too long because I'm hoping to have them done before Christmas time. If that gives you any hint or clue as to what I'm working on. If you guys would like to see me review and test any of these products, let me know in the comments so I can test all of these with you guys for the first time. I did also stop at my local Hobby Lobby because they had their master's touch 50% off and I found this and bought it. I probably shouldn't have, but I did. So I have two, <laughs> but I will fill them and I'm excited to fill them. And I think I might do different things in them because this one is a mixed media and this one is just sketching so different things to try and work through. We can do some sketching together because I know sketchbooks can be very difficult and I would love to do a video going specifically over sketching and how I go through my sketchbooks and what goals I make for that. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and to hit that bell so you can see more videos on what we're gonna be doing. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.